Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Lit Up Lightworker podcast, bringing you fun and soulful interviews with spiritual teachers with the aim of tuning you in and lighting you up. You can access all episodes of the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, and TuneIn, and be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos and interviews all about finding and following your life purpose. My name is George Lizos. I'm a spiritual teacher, intuitive healer, the author of Be The Guru, Lightworkers Gotta Work, and the number one best-selling protect your light. And today I have with me Ashley Wood. Ashley is a co-founder of Align Within, host of a weekly podcast, The Line Podcast, and co-author of the upcoming book, The Line, A New Way of Living with the Wisdom of Your Akashic Records. Inspired by the celestial realms above, earth, below, and the evolution of the soul, Ashley is passionate about teaching others how to trust themselves, honor their unique soul journey, and grow within their spirituality and consciousness. Ashley, welcome to the Lit Up Lightworker podcast. Thank you so much for having me, George. I feel at home already, and it's just been a couple of minutes chatting with you. <laughs> I know, right? I feel the same way. Ashley and I were chatting like prior to this, and we felt like an energetic connection as if like we knew each other before. Probably we did in, <laughs> in yes. past lives or something. But I'm so excited to have you here to chat about your new book, chat about the Akashic Records, and your totally unique way of talking and teaching about them. But before we get there, I want to hear a little bit about your story of coming to do this work? Sure. Well, this could be the longest story, so I'll make it, I'll, I'll give you the short form, but I was born with energetic gifts as so many people are. I was born as a psychic child and for so much of my life, I did everything I could to just turn it off, to push it down, to numb it, to just be normal, which was almost impossible, but I had uh, I mean, like ample opportunities to feel like a huge weirdo. And I didn't really want to feel that. And so I did everything I could to try to be normal and try to fit in. And it just got to a point where I was successful sometimes shutting my gifts down and feeling like a, a normal human, whatever that meant in my mind, which just basically meant like, I remember being a child or even a teenager or even like early twenties. And this happens so many times, like being outside. And then I would just stop. And I'd be like, do you feel that? Like whoever I would be with. And they'd be like, what are you talking about? I'm like, I feel like the pulse of mother earth. I feel, I feel, I feel so much energy in the wind. Like, do you feel that in your body? And the looks I'd get, they're like, what are you talking about? And I'm like, okay, I can't say stuff like that. I can't, I can't just, <laughs> when something like that happens, I just have to like tone it down. Um, and I did have, as I said, I was successful sometimes just tuning it out entirely. Um, and then in my 20s, it would come in and out in waves, but I was also doing everything I could substance wise to like numb it out, like a lot of drinking. I was using a lot of cannabis. Like, how can I just like not experience all this energy? Um, but then when I got pregnant, everything changed because when you are carrying a soul in your body and you're already energetically sensitive, like what a frequency upgrade. And I mean, I gave birth to a little star seed. So she was, she was preparing me and, and bringing me back to myself in such a beautiful way. But through my pregnancy, my gifts went through the roof. I, there was no way that I could do anything to turn them off anymore. I was, it was out of control. Like I was seeing spirits in the house and I was receiving messages and knowing things. And like, it was out of control because I had never really learned how to work with this. I'd always tried to work against it. So then when it came on full force, it, it, it was so much. Um, but at the same time, when I was pregnant, I, um, lost my job. I told my employers that I was going to be taking a maternity leave and they, I was on a contract position and they're like, well, we're just not going to renew your contract. And I was like, I'm going to fight this. I'm going to go to court. This is not right. Considering like I work with women and I'm like, this is, this is not right. But then I realized this is a gift from the universe. This is my highest self stepping in finally to be like, okay, are you going to actually live the life that you incarnated to live? Or are you going to keep trying to run away from yourself? Um, up until that point, I would consider myself a professional job hopper. I would stay somewhere for two years, go to the next, go to the next. I was constantly looking for my purpose and like looking like, what do I do with myself? Um, I was food blogging and 
not really bringing in enough money food blogging to actually call it a job because it was all ego. Like I was fully in that for ego. I'm like, oh, I need to take photos this way. I need to do it this way. Like it wasn't soul led. It was ego led, even though I was passionate about wellness and passionate about the stuff that led me there to begin with, when it, when it actually took that project to try to create something of it, it was all ego led. So it didn't, it didn't actually become anything other than a lot of beautiful connections and doors opening because every single every experience we have builds on the next. There's never a wrong direction. There's never a wrong turn. It always builds onto something else. So when I lost my job, I was like, okay, I remember um, thinking, well, what am I going to do? I'm just going to work this until it's over. I'll have my daughter. I'll, I will um, like do some food blogging here and there. The government kicks in a little bit when you're, when your baby is born, just for the support, I'll, I'll figure something out. And so I did that. I was still freelance writing for a couple of websites, making some money, sponsored posts for my stuff. Um, I decided to start doing cooking classes and like, just really like pulling stuff together in any way. And then I remember I broke down crying. It was January 1st, 2017 to the universe. And I said, like, just show me the way, like, just show me what to do. I know I meant to work for myself. My daughter has been born. My gifts are insane to the point where I feel like I have postpartum anxiety, but really I'm adjusting to a new frequency that I've suppressed for my whole life. I don't know how to, like, I felt completely out of control, but also directionless. And I was just like, universe, like I will do anything. Just show me the way. And something shifted. I started to get messages because I started to pay attention and those messages are always there, but I wasn't paying attention. And so as I started to pay attention to these messages that were coming through, I was guided to start a podcast and I was like, oh, okay. That's, that's simple. Um, I was married at the time. And my ex had so many years experience in audio engineering. And so I was like, well, I can produce podcasts at home. Like this is, this is great. I can do this. No problem. At that time I had already decided I was no longer food blogging. I'm like, I just want to eat my food. I don't want to take pictures of my plate anymore. I'm just going to live my life. And sure enough, what did I decide to do my podcast about was wellness and food. And it was just, again, ego patterning, like going back, going back. One day I was, um, this was before my podcast had actually launched, but I was standing at the kitchen sink, uh, doing dishes. And I had this voice come through and it was the voice of a psychic that I had seen in 2012. And she had said to me, first of all, I sat down and asked her to read my energy to read me. And she's like, I don't need to do this. You know how to do this. And I was like, okay, but please just do. And she's like, well, one day you're going to actually talk about spirituality. You're going to actually share this with people. You're going to talk about your gifts and you're going to have an audience of thousands of people who are going to listen to you. And I looked at her and I probably turned like 10 shades of red. And I was like, yeah, no, this lady's crazy. Like what's she talking about? So I'm washing the dishes years later. And this woman's voice comes through and she's like, one day you're going to have an audience of thousands of people and you're going to talk about spirituality. You're going to talk about your gifts. And I just stopped and I was like, oh my God, that's, my, that, that's now, that's now, like this is happening now. And so I went back to the drawing board. I created an episode for my first podcast. It was called things I have to tell you. It was so raw, so open, so vulnerable, so honest. And I just started talking from the time, telling stories from the time I was a kid all the way up until now. This is all the stuff I've never told my community of who I am and what I experience on a daily basic, daily basis. And so from that point, I shifted the focus and that podcast became almost like a, um, uh, a documentary, but like an audio, like a, like a podcast documentary of my own awakening. And I'd have different people on and I would learn through them. And one of my guests said to me one day, she's like, have you ever heard of the Akashic records? And within that moment, it felt like energy through my body. And I'm like, no, but tell me more. And she's like, I feel like this will change your life. And she gave me the name of a book. And I went out and bought that book that, um, that day I read maybe three chapters of it. And I heard within myself, put this away, 
don't use this, put this away. You know, this you're coming back to it. So April 1st of 2018, my daughter was napping. I opened the records for the first time and my life changed. And it was, it, it was like a coming home, like a frequency shift within me. That was so profound. Um, overwhelming, so profound. That was April 1st, fast forward to June. I think it was June 8th when I opened my calendar 2018 to start giving readings to people. Um, by the end of the year, I had read for hundreds of people around the world because I was just doing so many readings every, every day, as much as I could, I was in the records constantly. I'm like, I have to learn. I have to practice. I just want to be here. I just want to give readings. This is all I want to do. Take care of my child, give readings. And within a year I had built a six figure business of doing readings, realized I had to shift things, built a company based on the material that I had channeled, created courses on it. Um, now let's fast forward to today. That company has grown immensely. We have a team, we have, we're moving into experiences where we take trips and meet with people around the world and have retreats and do experiences online. I, as I said, I have a book coming out. And what I'm really excited about and passionate about right now is that we're growing a team of Akashic Record readers. So I created a course called How to Read the Akashic Records with the Pinnacle, which we can talk about in a moment. As you said, I teach the records very differently than um, anyone else I've ever met. But we have now taught um, over a thousand people how to read in this way. And we're growing a team of readers in our company to support other people with this beautiful modality that I believe is one of the best forms of therapy is an Akashic record reading and connecting with your highest self on such a deep level. It's a coming home. Wow. So that's my story what? very quickly. Yeah, well, yeah but you, you, you hit all the right points. And I think what your story demonstrates, it's something that many people are wondering about is how do we find my life purpose? And it came in, in stages. You were readying yourself for it. You, yes. for, for example, you probably couldn't be doing the Akashic Records work back when you were foot blogging because you had to learn something that led, led you to the next step and the next step and the next step. And then yes. a, a really important uh, detail that I want to focus on a little bit because I think it, it's going to help people on a practical level is you receive the inspiration to do that while you were washing the dishes you let go of resistance. You are not yes. overthinking it. You are not sitting down trying to decide what is my life purpose. You just let go. You are in this place of meditative washing, like doing something uh, mundane. And then that's when it hits you. Okay, this is what I'm supposed to do. This is when the next step appeared in those moments of releasing of resistance. Okay. Yes. Now let's talk about the Akashic Records because I'm excited to get in there. You told me before we started this interview, you you, you teach it from a Pleiadian perspective. Let's start there. I'm interested to, to see from your perspective, what is the Akashic Record, Records and how do you, how do you, how do we access it? Sure. Okay. So the Akashic Records, having no idea what has been shared already on this show, I'm going to, as you said, share from what I know. So the Akashic records are a complete metaphysical library of the entire soul history. So in order to believe in the Akashic records, you have one, everyone has one, but you must wrap your mind around the fact that you've had other lives other than this one, hundreds, most likely thousands. We've had one, definitely. <laughs> Hundreds, maybe thousands, you and I. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so the way that our Akashic records are written and recorded is based on our emotions. So whatever we feel, and this could be conscious, subconscious, this feeling could last for a split second. It can be like one of those, like you were not even aware of how, 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 how fleeting this emotion is. Whatever that emotion was, the Akashic records are so delicate that it is recorded in the records and then attached to that emotion is the surroundings, the experience, where you were, what you were doing, the people you were with, were you alone, what was going on. So this information within the records, if you can imagine all of the emotions you've ever experienced, even in this lifetime, and then multiply that by hundreds, thousands, it's infinite. It's infinite. These Akashic records are energetically stored in the Pleiades. So we can see the Pleiades star cluster from 
every point on the planet, as long as you can see the Taurus, uh, Taurus in the sky, if you can see Orion's belt, you can see the Pleiades. They're very small, muted little star cluster. They're not sparkly twinkly. They're it's, it's like, it's, they're not as bright. You can also download a, um, Starfinder app on your phone for free. If you've never located them, super easy. Just put your phone up, look for Taurus, you'll find the Pleiades. So if we want to think about wherever we're energetically from, like our soul is born from somewhere in the universe, most likely your energy is from many different places. The Pleiades are like the library of where our soul history is from. So let's say that your energy is from... I don't know, Andromeda, different galaxy altogether. And you're like, well, are my Akashic records stored in Andromeda? No, because consider a town. Your house is on one street. The library is over here. You live over here, but your your energy and history is stored over here. So we are physical beings and energetic beings. Knowing that our energetic history is stored in a physical place that we can actually see from Earth also supports us in understanding how we are physical and energetic. So our intuition, our messages, everything that we receive, our guidance, you can call it anything you want, pings, downloads, intuition, it it really doesn't even matter. It's coming from our Akashic records. This is coming from the Pleiades. We're on planet earth. We can see the star cluster. We're being fed directly from a star cluster in our, in our galaxy, in our, in our universe. Um, The way that it works is we're receiving this information through what I call the line, which is Mm an energetic frequency in our body. And we're receiving this information from our Akashic record, this guidance, this intuition, these these messages from our highest self. It's coming down, entering into the crown of our head, going down into our body, goes into the earth to be activated, brought up into the physical, then we receive it. So as we are receiving from our Akashic records, we are also writing them. This is where the infinite symbol can come from, the infinity symbol. We're receiving guidance based on our entire soul history. So we're in this moment at this time, this present moment. How does our soul want to grow in this moment? How do we want to expand? What has our soul designed for us in this moment to learn, to to experience? That's the guidance that we're going to be receiving. And it's based on our entire soul history. So that's why it comes from the Akashic records because it's like all the all the encyclopedias and, and, and books and documents, and this is all metaphysical, energetic. I'm just using this as an example, but all the history is there. So then when it's like, what are we moving through in this moment? That guidance is going to come from, from that. And then as we experience and, and live and feel, we're also writing our Akashic records. This is infinite flow of energy that's constantly moving that no matter how you believe intuition works, it, 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 it's, it's the exchange of energy, but this is a way that you can put different language to, to this. Like it's intuition, downloads, knowing, gut feeling, in, like it, it's all of this, but it's coming from the Pleiades and it's coming through us. And that's how the exchange works. I love that you that you have essentially identified the physical location of the Akashic yes. record so that people can connect with it in a much more palpable way. Yes. And, and essentially, you've just explained to us how intuition works because we're receiving this guidance from source. We all feel like when, for example, I'm claircognizant and clairvoyant, but in, when I'm into my claircognizance, I just receive a sense of knowing. Yes. Now I know, okay, it shines from, from the Pleiades. That is fascinating to know. And uh, you talked a little bit about soul family or soul realm where we come from from different parts of the universe and i want to focus a little bit on soul realm purposes and the akashic records in essence are there soul mates that we have soul friends or soul family members in the akashic records not incarnated right now with us that are guiding us in moving our life purpose and do we have a collective purpose as a group a group of souls for example based on where we come from yes this is such a fascinating question and yes absolutely we have okay full disclosure this is my second book so i'm learning it right now as i live it and astrologically i have saturn in my seventh house which is the house of partnerships. This is Aquarius for me. Like I am living this right now and 
having myself as my own study, I actually feel the reason I incarnated on this planet was to write this book. So yes, we have soul family and our soul family, there are, um, people on earth, humans that are our soul family, some will meet, some will never meet, but we are energetically connected the way the pinnacle have the pinnacle. I'll have to talk about that. Those are the Pleiadians I channel. Uh, but the way that they've described it to me is I'm looking out at the forest in my backyard. There's a, a tree, let's say you're, you all have the same roots as your soul family. So your soul family are all from um, the same place in the, in the, in the universe. Let's just use the Pleiades, for example some of the branches on the one side of the tree are the people that you'll meet in this life, like people you'll come in contact with, but there are branches on the other side of the tree that you'll never even touch. So there are soul family connections on this planet that you'll never actually meet, but you feel their energy. You feel their frequency as they lift, you lift as you fall, they fall. You're kind of like in, in balance together. Um, but there are also guides who are not in physical form who are guiding you. Your highest self is your most important guide. That's like, that's you, like we guide ourselves. Um, I know you, you believe this and honor this too. Our highest self is our most important guide, but then we have this team of support as well. And yes, um, I've seen this actually, it's so beautiful. I saw this last week in a reading actually, um, with someone, I still do readings from time to time. And it, this soul came through as a baby and said to this woman, you can birth me if you want in this life, I'm your soul family. Like I will be your child or I'll just guide you. It's up to you. But like I, I physically, well, not physically, energetically, but it was through a connection that I saw it and saw this light around her that has been guiding her that she can choose if this will be a physical guide in this life or an energetic guide in this life. Now, there are so many different pairings and connections and, and soul contracts that I am just learning about right now, um, but we are galactically paired with another human on this planet. And that galactic pairing can be romantic. It can be friendship, it, but it's a, it's a very powerful, powerful bond that when you come together, your, your light amplifies. And this is a, of a two pairing. Um, you do not have to be from the same place in the multiverse, but like to be continued, because I'm really learning a lot about this right now. And I don't have the full information yet. Yes. It will be put in, it'll be put in a book one day. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And it's very much in alignment with the kind of work that I do with past lives. I've received the exact same of information. Essentially when I, when I do my psychic clearing sessions, I scan people's auras and I identify different like stuff that's there. And yeah. I often see past life friends, I call them, or past life soulmates that are there wanting to support, wanting to guide, sometimes wanting to help heal genealogical trauma or past life trauma that they've experienced together in a previous lifetime, etc. Now, when it comes yeah. to the Akashic Records, this is um, a, a question connected to both soul realms, but also more generally, can we tap into our soulmate spirit guides, Akashic records, and more generally, can we tap into other people's Akashic records? Another great question <laughs> with my selenite wand. Um, yes, you, you can tap into other, <laughs> other people um, within your records. People are going to step forward. And if you have someone in your life that you're curious about and you want to know more, you ask in your Akashic records, tell me more about this person. Their high self will most likely step forward and give you information. Now you cannot, or you shouldn't tap into other people's Akashic records without their permission, yes. because this is our soul history. It is so sacred. And so this is something we're very serious on when we teach our readers is that you do not go into someone else's records without their consent. Furthermore, you do not go into someone's records if they have uh, transitioned. Like if someone has transitioned and you want to know, you go into your own records and you call in their energy from, because then it is from your perspective. You're not going into someone else's perspective, which is going to be ego-based anyway. Like if I entered your records, I'm still going from my perspective. So I'm not going to get clear information. Plus I'm disrespecting, like if I'm going in for my own purpose, I'm disrespecting mm -hmm. your boundaries. 
I'm, if I wanted to talk to your soul, I go into my records, I call in your highest self and I talk from my home. I talk from my place. You don't just go into other people's homes without asking. It's not, it's not polite. So, um, also as a parent, I, people ask this a lot. Can I go into my child's, uh, records? And that's another no, because just because your child is in the physical form of a five-year-old, a six-year-old, their soul could be eons older than yours. Like you have to respect their soul journey and they chose you as a guide, but you're, they're a guide to you as well. That's how I view parenting anyway, is like we're guiding each other. And so there has to be that respect, that boundary of, of just knowing everything you need to know is within your own records. And so if you have a question about a soul connection, if you have a question about a child, if you have a question about someone you want to go on a date with or something, go into your own records and ask for the guidance based on your perspective. And you will be given the information that you need for your soul growth and, and your path. And that, that you're always given exactly what you need. I love that and thank you so much for talking about the ethics behind readings because we see so much unethical uh, readings going on out there and I think it's so important for light workers, for intuitives to know that, you know what, there are boundaries, there are ethics we need to follow yeah. to ensure that we're respecting other people as well as our own karma. Now, let's talk about the possibilities of accessing our Akashic records. Why access our Akashic records? records in essence and when we're in them first of all how do we get in them and what are the possibilities well they're infinite i'm going to tell you two different ways to access them so the first is with a prayer and the reason for a prayer it's a sound frequency so it's like if you're going to open a door like a, on the other side of this door there's a keypad you put in the number you open the door that's the same as a sound frequency in order to access a different realm access the akashic realm so I channeled a prayer um, in my own records in 2020, which is called the prayer of the new world. And it is the frequency of the Pleiades and also the frequency of mother earth, because as I shared, this information comes into us, has to be brought into the physical, activated, brought back up for us to receive. And so it's a combination. It's a very grounded energy, but it takes you into a different realm within the records, a different, let's say a different area within the records. Um, and this is the prayer that I use to channel as well as the prayer that we teach our students. Um, but then when I started working with the records, they were telling me, and we briefly talked about this before too, like how intuition works. Um, they were telling me, they kept saying the pinnacle who I work with, they kept saying the line, the line, the hotline, the hotline. And I'm like, what are you talking about? And it took time because I wasn't ready. Like you said, things build. I was not ready to step into what that meant and to teach that. And I still had to learn so much, but this is how I learned about the frequency of the line and that our intuition is coming from the Akashic records. So essentially if you're connected into yourself and you're receiving your messages, you're connected into your Akashic field, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, you're always accessing it. But well, first of all, you're not going to get every message because we're here for the human experience. And if we knew everything, then there'd be no learning. But um, this is kind of like when you're connected into your intuition and you're not actually entering into the records with a with a, the prayer, it's like you're standing on the yard outside of a home or you're standing outside of a home and you're looking in. And from the yard, you can see so much, like you can see the way the landscaping is, you can see what the house looks like. You can look in the windows. You can see there's so much that you can receive from this, the energy of a space without actually entering it. That's receiving from your line. That's getting your, your, your messages. That's like sometimes 75% of the picture, sometimes 50%, sometimes 40%, depending on how connected into you are and your own guidance. Um, and then when you use the prayer and you enter into the records, it's like, unlocking the door and entering into the home. And that's when you get the full picture. And that's when you get the full understanding of, of what the situation is. Now, the information that you can access is infinite. It's infinite. You can ask about 
your life purpose, your gifts, your lessons. Why are you here? Why did you incarnate? What are you to be doing in this moment? What are you learning? Why are you going through the traumas that you're going through? Why did this happen? Why did that happen? What about this person? What about the job? What about this? What about that? The reason that I said before that I feel it's like the best form of therapy is because you are connecting with your highest self. You're connecting with your guides and you are receiving information that is above and beyond anything any human can tell you. It's like you're connected into your energy, the highest guidance for you. And it is delivered in such love and support. And so if you meet with a reader, um, like an Align Within reader, for example, they will support you in this. And yes, the information is coming through a human, but they're simply being an open channel and open conduit for the information that is that is you. And when you're in the records, so often it's like, I knew that already. I knew that already. I knew that already because it's information from your soul. And it's just that beautiful confirmation and that beautiful reassurance that yes, you are on the path or this is where your attention is supposed to be. Just a little, sh a yes. little shift, a little nudge this way. And then it's, it's, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. I love that. I always say that when you are connected to source, when you're connected essentially to the Akashic records, you no longer ask questions. You just know the answers because it's just a knowing after a knowing after a knowing. And yeah. it's essentially the way I understand it. It's a, it's a very deep intuitive connection, but it's focused because you yeah. know where you're getting the information from and you yeah. know it's coming from your highest perspective. You know it's coming yeah. from your soul family, from your own soul path, essentially, soul blueprint. Yeah. Now, yeah. can we all connect to it to the degree to which that, let's say, for example, you can connect to it or are there limits to how deep we can go into the Akashic Records? Well, this can be answered again in a couple of different ways. We all have access to our Akashic Records. And I have a little bit of a problem with the way that this is taught by some other teachers in that you have to complete a certain amount of hours before you're like, um, skilled at accessing the records. It's like, no, this is your birthright. Like you're coming yeah. home to yourself. You're connecting into your energy. No one knows your skill level within this better than you. And so we tell our students too, we don't even offer certificates of completion because I'm like, you're never completed. This is a lifelong practice that you then take with you into other lifetimes. And like you, you keep building with this. Um, it really depends on how open you are and so with our course, we also, um, there's a prerequisite that's called clear the line, release fear. And it's about releasing fear of receiving and whatever fears you're holding, because some of us are actually afraid of our own guidance. And some people are afraid of what happens if I receive this, what am I going to see? Like, I'm actually just, there's, there's a huge hurdle to jump over to receive clearly and freely without fear this can be i mean we could talk about this forever scorpio and south node it can be like the religious uh thousands of years of of patriarchy and and fear-based and Limited burning beliefs. the witches at the stake like so many things yeah, yeah. that are within yeah. all of us so we work through the fears first and then we go into the records so it really depends on how open you are um, but then also certain people have certain gifts in this life and are meant to shine in ways to support other people. So will you access it the same way that I do? I have no idea. I can say with confidence that certain people I've taught are better than I am in the records and more skilled. And I'm like, my purpose was to teach you how to do this. And now look at you go, like you're blowing my mind, how amazing you are at this. And so this isn't a competition or anything to yes. be like, I can't do this as well as Ashley can. It's like, how can you use this as a tool to shine light on what it is that lights you up that, yes. that brings, that brings you that fire, because that's what it's, that's what it's for. That's what it's for. 
and you you'll, you'll receive it, what you need. Exactly. Because we've been doing this for probably many different lifetimes in the past. Oh, yeah. I am I'm a Greek pagan priest here in Cyprus. So I follow the spiritual tradition of the ancient Greeks and the, and the old religion. And in one of the many philosophical schools, the Pythagorean philosophical school, I was practicing some of the, of the mystery school practices that they were passed down from generation to generation within those mystery schools. And I was doing one meditation that was very similar with this line process that you've just described, in the sense that you're connecting to something higher and you're creating this channel of information coming through. And then I'm realizing, you know what? All this quote-unquote new age stuff that we believe we're really teaching is really very, very ancient old age. <laughs> yes, we're just giving it new language so that it's like, it, it's it's, modern within our time but this this line like and the akashic records like that the word akashic is sanskrit like that dates back that has gone like people have been accessing this since the time souls entered a human body like this is not new none of this is new crystals are older than all of us like like yes. none of this is new I love we're that. just receiving the guidance on how to teach it in a way that in this aquarian time we can understand it, we can digest it, we can experience it, we can bring it into our human experience. But I mean, we have been doing this for centuries too, because we've done this in our past lives. So it's like, we're just going through and and it's so liberating. It's so liberating yeah. to know that because so many people, even in my own uh, my own course, Intuition Mastery School, people come like, oh, I can't do it. I'm not sure about it. I'm like, well, you've been doing this forever. It's nothing new. It's something you were born with. And it's just a matter of like stripping all those layers of limiting beliefs and trauma and conditioning and realizing, you know what? Mm -hmm. Removing the obstacles that allow your connection to become more apparent because you were born with it. And then it all comes online. Oh my yeah. goodness. Ashley, thank you so much for sharing so much with us. I feel like tuned in, tapped in. I'm so excited for everybody and myself to read your upcoming book. Can you please thank let you. us know a little bit about the book? Where can people get it from and how they can get in touch with you? Yes, thank you so much. I also feel so lit up and it's just, I mean, that's this podcast. So <laughs> tapping into the frequency. Um, the book is apparently to come out for July the 5th. Now it was supposed to come out May 31st. There was a shortage of, shortage of supplies to print. So like God willing and all aligned, it comes out on July the 5th. That being said, please pre-order the book. You can do so from um, our website, alnwithin.com. It's right up on the homepage. You, you won't miss it. Um, and in this book there, like it, it will meet you where you're at. If you've never, ever connected into your own messages or intuition. You've never, the, you're new in this whole path. Akashic Records is like, well, what's that? I will guide you. If you are ready to jump into the multidimensionality, the dreams, the all the celestial stuff, this book is for you. It's a journey. We begin at the beginning where I'm literally energetically holding your hand and I take you through a whole journey of coming back to yourself. There are exercises, there are um, modules. You don't have to do them, but they're there for you for extra support. Um, we talk about dreams. We talk about soul family. We talk about soul contracts. We talk about the Akashic records. We talk about purpose, your gifts, lessons. I mean, it, it's all in this book. And so I'm really excited to share it with the world. I am so excited to read it and for everybody else to read it as well. And I know you have a coupon code that people can use to get 15% off. Can you talk a little bit about that and let us know what that is? Yes. So if you want to use the code lit up for 15% off of any of our workshops on ale and within, I don't even know how many workshops we have at this point, but I mentioned we have the, how to read the Akashic records with the pinnacle course, which I didn't mention the pinnacle are the um, highest form of Pleiadian consciousness. And they're the guides that I work with. They're also the gatekeepers or librarians of the Akashic records. So they decide how much energy is going to be shared, what comes through. Um, so anyway, they're, the source. That's where I've learned everything that I know. Yes. Um, uh, so there are so many different courses on there on how to trust yourself, activate the line, know your soul is one of my favorites where you actually travel to where your soul was from. You meet your star family, you understand messages in the physical body and how your physical body communicates with you and how the, how energy 
can manifest into physical, into illness and how to work through that from an energetic perspective. There are so many courses. So go to alnwithin.com, have a fun time looking through the different workshops, use lit up for 15% off. And on Instagram, we're also ALN within. Perfect. Well, Ashley, thank you so much for coming onto the podcast. It was such a pleasure having you here and wishing you a lovely rest of your day. Thank you so much, George. I'm so grateful. Thank you so much.